So a little while back, I was swagging my way up and down the aisles of the great one and only Walmart. And I came across this. Sticker paper. How fun. And so I figured, why not make a tutorial on how to make your own stickers at home using sticker paper and some other very, very basic tools that you'll most likely already have around your house. Hello, I'm Zakira and welcome back to my channel. So before we start, just wanted to let you guys know to be sure to stay till the end of this video to learn how you can get some free sticker stuff from my shop. And now that that's out of the way, let's get into the video. So I'll be showing you guys how to make two different kinds of stickers. Individual cutout stickers, which you can turn into little packs like this, as well as how to make sticker sheets. And both of these methods do not use any fancy tools. You do not need a Cricut machine or anything like that. The only semi-special thing you'll need is the sticker paper itself, as well as some kind of illustration software or photo editing software. Whatever you already have downloaded in your computer it will probably work just fine, and if not, there are plenty of free options available. So before you begin making any stickers, you need to have the artwork that you're going to turn into stickers. This can be your own illustrations, or some clip art, or some photographs, whatever you want to turn into stickers. In my case here, I'm illustrating this set of 12 birthstones. I painted them in watercolor. And if you're curious why I'm painting on such tiny pieces of paper, it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I'm turning these into stickers. It was literally just because I didn't have any watercolor paper on hand at the time, uh, other than this pack of watercolor postcards. I've had that pack of postcards for years and never used them, and uh, but they finally came in handy. However, working traditionally did kind of end up being a slight pain in the next step. So after you have your artwork, the next step is to format it properly for printing as stickers. If your artwork is traditional like mine, then first you'll need to scan it into your computer. Obviously, if the artwork you're using is already a digital file, then this step is irrelevant. But here I'm scanning the images in at 600 dpi. You don't have to have your images at that high of a resolution. I just personally like to have a copy of my artwork at a very high resolution just in case. But I would say that 300 dpi is a minimum for your artwork. And this goes the same if your work is traditional or digital. 300 dpi is a standard printing quality, so you can be sure that if you set it at that resolution, then when it prints, it won't have any graininess or blurriness to it. Now the program I'm using for formatting my stickers is Clip Studio Paint because I already have it and I know my way around it. But you can use whatever program you'd like, Photoshop, Procreate probably, Paint Tool Sci, Krita, GIMP, I've heard. Whatever works, as long as it has basic photo editing abilities and the ability to have layers. So if your artwork was traditional like mine, you're probably going to have to clean up your scanned images a bit. There's always some dust that gets scanned in, so you gotta get rid of those. And depending on your scanner, you may have to adjust the brightness and contrast. Once again, if your artwork is digital, it's a lot easier. The only thing you really want to make sure is that your design has a transparent background, or at least a white background. It's a lot easier to make your stickers if they have a transparent background, but if you can't figure that out or something, or it's just not possible, then try to at least make it white. Also, as a tip, I recommend working on a canvas that's already the size you want your finished stickers to be but just make sure that the resolution is still very high. So in my case, these birthstone stickers are going to be just under two inches when they print, so I'm working on a two inch canvas that's set at 600 dpi. If you prefer, you can always just work on your images at whatever size you want, but I would recommend that you at least export them at the size you want them to print at. And I'll show you why this is helpful in a bit. Now after I've cleaned up my artwork, I like to add a white border all around the image. This will become that distinct white border that stickers usually have. Technically, you don't need to add this if you don't want your sticker to have a border, but I just personally think it looks better with it. To do this in Clip Studio Paint, all you need to do is select your image, then go to Edit and hit Outline Selection. 
Then it will ask you how thick you want your outline to be. I usually just play with this until it looks as thick as I'd like it to be. And it will automatically put an even border all around your image in the color that you selected. So this way you won't have to draw it in manually. I don't know if other programs have this feature, I would assume they would since it's a very basic feature, but I have never used anything other than Clip Studio, so I can't say for certain. But I would definitely look into your program to see if it can do this because uh, it saves a lot of time, obviously. After I have generated my white border, I then go back in and manually even things out. Again, this is totally optional, but it's just that the automatically generated border will be very exact and it will wrap tightly around every nook and cranny in your artwork. And if you haven't guessed yet, we're going to be cutting these out by hand eventually, so you probably don't want to leave too many complicated corners to cut around. Once I have my white border, I then select my image again and add another border around everything. This will ultimately become your cutting guide, so you want this border to be very thin and dark so that it shows up when you print, but doesn't really waste too much space. At this point, your stickers should look like an actual sticker, and it's ready for export. So export each of your stickers as PNGs, including the transparent background. Once again, export them at the finished size you want them to be, but keeping the full resolution. And finally, you may want to do a test print on regular paper so that you can make sure everything looks good, everything's the right size, and the colors are okay. And after that, your stickers are finally ready. So let's go and make some stickers. So after you have all of your designs ready to go, the next step is to line them up for printing. The sticker paper I'm using is 8.5 by 11 inches, so I created a new document at that same size and then imported all of the images in. And now hopefully you guys can see why it was a good idea to export your individual stickers at the finished size that you wanted, in my case 2 inches, because now when you import them into your new document, they will already be the correct size in relation to the paper. So you won't have to worry about resizing and measuring and making sure your stickers are the size you actually want them to be. For the sake of not wasting paper, you're going to want to pack your stickers as tightly as possible. However, because you already put in that white border with the black outline, it should be very easy to arrange them because you already know how much border space each of them need. Now after I packed my sheet of birthstone designs, I noticed that I still had some spaces between my stickers. Uh, so I just imported a few of my icons, my logos, and some whale flies, and filled in the space with that. This way I'm really minimizing the wasted space and getting some fun little stickers that I can use for freebies when people buy stuff from my shop, or uh, even just for myself. <laughs> I mean, those whale flies. I don't know if I'll be able to control my urge to stick little whale flies everywhere. Once you have your packed sheet of stickers, the next step is to print them out. One thing you're going to want to be conscious of is that most printers require your document to have a white border. I use Microsoft Word to print, and the minimum border that you can set is 0.12 inches. And when I go to print preview, you can see that some of the border lines of my stickers are getting cropped off. But in this case, I don't mind because none of the actual designs themselves were cut off and I can eyeball good enough to cut the border without the black guide on those spots. But this is why you're definitely going to want to make sure you check the print preview before hitting print. And if any of your designs are getting cut off, then you're going to want to readjust your sticker placement until they all fit. Some printers have the ability to do borderless printing, but I'd recommend against using that for this because when you print borderless, what your printer does is expand your image and some of it gets cropped off. But you don't really know how much of your image will be cropped off. So it's just a better idea to leave the white border, but make it as small as your printer will allow and then adjust your designs to fit within it. I'm using a regular inkjet printer. You can of course use a laser printer if you own one, but make sure that your sticker paper is suited for whatever kind of printer you have. And ta-da! Your stickers are printed! The last thing to do is to cut them out. So for the first method here, we're just going to make regular cut out individual stickers. And I did this using a regular pair of scissors. I found it easiest, honestly. Take your time with this, it's a little tedious. After doing a few, you will start to get the hang of cutting them out and it'll go a lot faster. 
And ta-da! You have made your own stickers at home. Congratulations! <laughs> Now before I move on to show you guys the sticker sheet method, I figured I'd also show you guys how to make this sticker pack with the little baggie and package topper. If you're planning on selling stickers, then you're going to want to make some nice packaging like this. So I use these little plastic bags to hold the stickers. You can get like 50 or 100 of these at the dollar store in various sizes. Um, they're very inexpensive. Then when it comes to the package topper, you're going to want to hop back onto your computer and design it. So you're going to want to create a canvas that's a little bit wider than your plastic baggie and twice the height that you want your finished package topper to be. So in my case, my canvas is set to 3.25 inches wide and 3 inches tall. On the bottom half of your canvas, design how you want the front of your packaging to look and on the top half upside down, design how the back of the packaging will look. I would recommend using light colors for the background so that you save on ink when you print these out. I printed these out on thick cardstock paper. You can use whatever paper you like, but I just recommend using something thicker than normal paper so that it feels a little more professional. Once you cut them out, all you need to do is fold it over and you've got your package topper. Now this part is kind of optional, but if you want your package to look and feel super nice, then you're going to want to slide a piece of paper inside of your plastic bag behind your stickers so that they have a nice backing. Then you're going to want to roll up the baggie, position your package topper, and insert two staples. And you're done! So pretty! So moving on to method two, if you want to make a sticker sheet, most of the steps are exactly the same. All you're going to do is arrange your sticker designs on a sheet that's the size that you want your finished sticker sheet to be. In my case, I decided to make these sticker sheets so that four would fit on one piece of sticker paper. One thing you may want to do a little bit differently for the sticker sheet is to make the black cutting guide border thinner and lighter on each sticker. Because unlike the first method where you just cut out the stickers by themselves, in this case the border is going to be staying on the sheet. Even though it's going to ultimately stay on the part of the sheet that gets discarded, whoever is going to be receiving this sheet will see that border. Not to mention, we're cutting these out by hand again, and you may not be perfect, so some of the black may end up on the stickers themselves. That may not look very nice, but again, it's up to you. In my case, I made the border very, very light gray, so you can hardly see it when it prints out, but it's just enough so that I still have that guide for cutting because I sure as heck cannot cut perfectly without a guide. After you print them out, cut out each sticker sheet. Once you have your sticker sheet, you're going to need to cut the stickers so that the sticky part of the paper is cut, but the backing paper isn't. And to do this, we're going to use a craft knife. Now because you're doing this by hand, you may want to practice on a scrap piece of sticker paper so that you can figure out how hard you need to press in order to cut the top half without cutting through the entire sheet. However, don't worry too much about being totally, totally perfect. Once again, take it slow. Also, be very, very careful because craft knives are very, very sharp. And that is it! Your sticker sheet is ready to go. So that is how you can make your own stickers at home using sticker paper. For the stickers I made in this video, I used this matte sticker paper I got at Walmart, like I mentioned. But I'm also planning on getting some glossy sticker paper because I feel like glossy is just more sticker-like. I also know a lot of people really like using printable vinyl. It's definitely more expensive, but it makes a very, very high quality sticker that's like waterproof and everything. And on the flip side, if you're just making some stickers for yourself, or giving them to your friends, or just practicing and you want something inexpensive, then you can use label paper that's used for shipping labels. The only issue with those is that the backing paper is usually printed all over. 
it will usually say the brand of the paper and have instructions on like how to print on it and how to peel off the backing and stuff. Um, also, I don't think they usually put any information about things like whether it's acid free or not. So it may not be totally suitable for making stickers to sell, but it's definitely a cheaper alternative. I hope this video was useful and you guys are inspired to start making your own stickers. I definitely want to just design lots and lots more stickers because they're just so much fun to make. If you would like to buy some stickers from me, uh, the stickers I made in this video are available on my shop on zakir.com. The link is in the description box. But if you would like to give sticker making a try for yourself, then for this video, I have set up a digital download page on my shop where you can get the digital ready to print version of this Valentine sticker sheet that you guys can then print out at home and use for your own personal sticker making uses. This way, if you guys want to practice these sticker cutting techniques, um, you can give it a go without having to go through all of the prep work and formatting work. And since this is the first digital download product thingy that I've made, and in the spirit of Valentine's Day, I decided to make this download completely free because I want you guys to spread the love. <laughs> like go make some stickers and slap your friends with them. Okay, no, I, I do not condone violence. Do not hurt your friends. That is my disclaimer. I'll have the links to everything linked down in the description box, so check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope you guys found this video helpful or enjoyable in any way. And if you did, please do hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more. And if you have a moment before you go, be sure to leave a comment letting me know what you think. Have you ever made stickers before? Are you going to make some now? What is your favorite type of chocolate? <laughs> Whatever. I'll be back soon with more videos. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya.